Happy Saturday morning, everyone. Well, I'm solo here today. It's September 5th, 2020, and this is week 92 of our keto journey. Stacy gave me her weight this morning, but she had to go in super early. She got up about 6.15 this morning, and I didn't feel like getting up and making a video at 5.15 in the morning. So, I will be reporting both of our weights and a little recap of the last week we've had here. My weigh-in last week was 330.6, and this morning my weigh-in was 329.2, so I'm down 1.4 pounds this week. We had a fantastic week at the mini cabin out in Pinckney, Bruin Lake Recreation State Park, a lot of words, but uh, yeah, we had a blast. We did a lot of the walking, we just hung out and enjoyed the deck and the fire and made some wonderful keto foods. Had a lot of fun. And let's see, now where was Stacy? Last week, Stacy was 137.8, and this morning, Stacy was 137.8. If nothing else, she's consistent, right? Yeah, so she's doing fine. She's doing great. At work, she's doing the job where she's actually moving around the store a whole lot more. She told me yesterday she was so excited because she had 19,000 steps. I would say I average about 4,000 to 8,000 steps a day. So she's lapping me. I gotta get back into the program and get moving more, I guess, because she's kicking my butt. So there's our weights for the week. Now, of course, like I mentioned, we went to the mini cabin. We have scheduled a few different vacations and had to cancel them due to the craziness of the world. Things come up, they close resorts or flights get canceled or moved or whatever, and then we end up not being able to go. So we scaled it way down and said, hey, let's just try a two-night thing somewhere that's 15, 20 minutes away from the house. That's what we did with the mini cabin. It was a really nice little getaway. In over 30 years of being together, we've never gone camping. As a kid, I used to go camping all the time. I think Stacy did too. They did a little differently than we did. But basically, I could never get her to go camping. And now with her working with the DNR, it's like, well, we get free camping anyway, so let's go. <laughs> so now I'm trying to get her more involved in going out and doing more camping, just the local stuff within an hour's drive type of thing. But this first experience was a lot of fun. This last week, I've been on a medical leave, in a sense, from all my medicines. We were trying to figure out what's going on with my stomach, and I've had a lot of trouble for like the last nine months, 12 months with my stomach. And he said, well, let's see if, you know, your, your numbers are looking good. I just saw him again recently and my A1C came down again. So he's like, let's try a two-week trial with no medicines. Let's see how your stomach reacts to that. Let's see how your sugar reacts to that. So I've been doing that and my sugars have creeped up a little. It's scaring me a little, but I've not reached the threshold of where I would be stopping. But I can report... I am actually feeling a lot better in my stomach. I don't know if it's just a, a weird whim week or what. And when I reintroduce medicines, I'm going to reintroduce them one at a time after a couple days to see if one of them is reacting. Could just be that metformin is tearing me up. I don't know. I've got to get these sugars under control. When my sugars are a little higher, and, and they are coming up higher, I've been averaging in like 190s with uh, no medicines at all. What ends up happening is when my sugars are a little higher, I can't seem to get into a deep enough ketosis to make it effective. So I feel like I'm in this counterintuitive, like, you know, this is my sugar and I'm trying to get off the medicines and the sugar goes up a little, but my ketosis goes down. And then if I take the medicine and it is effective and it brings me down into the 130s, 140s, my ketones go up, but not high enough to really start making a difference at this point. So I'm really trying to work with the doctors and try things at home and experiment a little bit with things. Just trying to fix this. I want to get back. I'm tired of being installed. I mean, I'm eating pretty darn good. I have fasted this week. I did my 16 eights even when we were camping on the intermittent fasting. And I got in a 30 hour fast this week. <clears throat> That's maybe part of the 1.4 down. I'm not sure exactly. But I was at the library and I got Life in the Fasting Lane, a new Dr. Fung book. And of course I already own and picked up 
uh, the hard copy, because I have the Kindle version, of the Complete Guide to Fasting by Dr. Funk. I'm rereading this. I've already read this. I haven't read this. I'm going to read this over the weekend. And I'm just trying to get back into a stronger mental state to get back into deeper fasts. I think that's going to help me with my insulin resistance. And I think it's going to help me, of course, with weight loss. But generally, those are more for the fasts are more for trying to break the insulin resistance, get the sugars down. I've been diabetic for over 10 years and I was on so many meds and so much insulin that when I started keto, I was able to eliminate a good portion of it, but gosh, I'm still fighting that demon. So I'm working on it. Now, without taking all those pharmaceutical medic medicines, which for me, and I'm gonna butcher all these names, was metformin, extended release, and amaryl, which is glimpyrite, I think they call it as well. Um, then I was taking a cholesterol medicine, which he said I no longer need, and a blood pressure medicine, which I no longer need. So I'm off all those medicines right now in this trial. He said take them all out of the mix. Been monitoring my blood pressure has been fantastic. Um, my cholesterol, obviously, I won't know until my next blood work, but it was in the 180s. So we we're good on that too. But now on the natural side of things, I've added some things into my daily pills that I would take. And these are more natural options that I felt more comfortable with using. So these are the things I'm taking now. Magnesium, of course, vitamin D, and I just started taking some melatonin, trying to get myself to get to bed at night. If I take it at like 10 or 11 o'clock, I'm hopeful to try and get to bed by midnight, one o'clock. And that's huge for me. I'm going to again butcher the names. Berberine, glucosamine chondroitin, which is for joints. The berberine, by the way, is for supposedly natural sugar control. Fish oil, a complex super B, a probiotic, again, because we're trying to deal with this stomach of mine. Apple cider vinegar. Now, I'm taking it in a capsule form with the mother, but I just can't take the taste of regular apple cider vinegar. I've tried it a few times. I just can't do it. And then... With this time of year in August, September, every year, I have to do for a little bit some Zyrtec because I have a lot of allergies for outside stuff. So taking all these meds are my choice over taking the pharmaceutical meds that I was taking for the blood pressure, the cholesterol, and uh, the diabetes stuff. It's still too soon to tell. I'm a week in. My sugars have creeped up. I'm not happy about it but it's understandable. And I'm continuing to move. I'm, I'm getting on the bike and I'm, I'm moving around. We were hiking a lot in that little camping trip. So I'm hopeful that if I continue to move, continue to drink, continue to eat basic, that I can start seeing these sugars come down. Maybe the apple cider vinegar and the berberine com combination will effectively help lower that sugar over time here. And body's kind of like saying, what's going on, I think, at the moment. But I do have to say, my stomach's feeling better. And with my stomach feeling better, I'm feeling better. That's a real big start for me. Melatonin, I think, is effective because when I've taken it, it, you know, I'm finding my eyes drooping a little. I'm trying not to fight it. I have no phones, no laptops, nothing on. I take it and I lay my head down. And I'm trying to just get more sleep. That's important. And I know it, and it's one of my biggest downfalls is I don't sleep enough. But I'm working on that. So like us all, we're you know in these strange times and a little bit of uncertainty. The weight loss and the focusing on the things for that are not as easy in some senses and cases. You might have things you know within the family. You might have stresses. You might have financial issues. Very thankful and very blessed that you know we're doing okay and medically and health-wise, we're doing okay. So I'm trying my best to refocus by reading these, these books, get more into the mental state to get back into doing some fasting, which is almost 95% of it is mental. There's a little hunger pain for a little while, but it's just breaking through it. I had a hard time with the girls being home 
from school and from college and they make food or ask for me to make them food probably every two to three hours. It's hard to fast when you're doing that. Uh, Lauren is back at college. She has, by the way, dropped off from keto, sadly. I was very depressed to hear that for her. She had lost about 10 pounds and she was doing great when I was making the foods and she was eating here. But when she went back to school, it's more, you know, college kids eat cheap and fast and easy like spaghetti, you know, and things like that. So she's back to her normal ramen and crackers and spaghettis and pastas and rices and things that are cheap and fast and easy for them to make. Not my choice. I'd love to see her continue, but at this point, that was her decision and I got to support it. Julia, on the other hand, I've been trying to change what she eats and how she eats slowly but surely. Just, you know, swapping this for that. I actually gave her a keto bun the other day. They're really actually pretty good. I'm a little scared of that net versus total carb stuff. I tend to go just pure food and go total carbs. These are 26 grams and 25 of them get minus out with fiber, which can actually kind of affect your stomach too. So I'm trying to be very careful with that. But we did use them on vacation. We really wanted to try them. They were good. I don't think it's something I would put into my everyday routine. I'm way too sensitive with the sugars and the issues with my stomachs. I just want regular basic food. It might work great for some of you guys, and I'm certainly not knocking it. Stacy might use them still, but uh, yeah, I think I'm gonna step back from that. I don't like when I see my net carbs number versus a total carbs number in my carb manager, which I still use daily. I just use the free version. It works really well. Anyway, guys, thanks for hanging out with me. I don't have my partner to ramble with, but hopefully I rambled enough that you kind of got an idea of where our day and our week was. Very happy to report that I'm down a little bit, and I'm really happy to report that my stomach is feeling somewhat better. Every day I wake up is another opportunity to get better and move forward. So I hope that I hope and wish the best for all of you guys too on your journeys, whatever it is that you may be facing or trying to do, if it's just a mental battle of staying away from the carbs or whatever it is you're doing. Have a great week and thanks for hanging out with me and we will talk to you soon. Bye.